All right, kids, let's put up your instruments. We're not going to be playing today. We've got a very special guest speaker today. All right, come on, guys, let's settle down a little bit. We've got a very special guest speaker today. Her name is Mrs. Scott. She's a dental hygienist. She's here to talk to you today about the proper care for your teeth. Now, I know you guys might realize that teeth not a very important part of your, your lives, but it really and truly is. And she's come here today to talk to you all about that importance. So I'd like you all to give her, her your full attention and just listen to what she has to say, okay? And without further ado, I give you Mrs. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Adele, and thank you, everybody, for having me today. Um, like your teacher told you, my name is Mrs. Scott, and I'm a registered dental hygienist. I've been doing what I do for about seven and a half years now, and I absolutely love it. However, there was a point in my life where I was in your shoes, and I was in middle school band, and I also played band in high school and in college. Um, I played both the saxophone and the piano, which, by the way, where are my sax players at in here? Awesome, awesome. Um, but yeah, so I absolutely love music, and you know, when it came time of deciding what I wanted to do for a living, I was really torn between music and dentistry. So in the end, uh, dentistry did win, but I, like I said, I still play my instruments, and it's still a very important part of my life. Um, so that's part of the reason why I'm here to talk to you today, because you guys are going to, believe it or not, need your teeth for the rest of your life. Uh, I actually met a 60, 63 or 64 year old man not too long ago. He was a patient in our dental office and he had come in because he had been diagnosed with severe periodontal disease. Now periodontal disease is when you have a disease that affects your entire mouth. So it'll affect your teeth, and it'll affect your gums and your bone that holds your teeth in place. So this man, unfortunately, he never took care of his teeth growing up. And as a result, he wound up having to have all of his teeth pulled. And when you have your teeth removed, there's no support in your lower jaw, and your lower jaw will uh, resorb or basically disintegrate. And because of this, what had happened with this man, his jaw um, disintegrated so much that he was no longer able to play a saxophone. And he was he was absolutely devastated by it. I mean, this is this was his entire career, his passion, his everything. So, you know, I want to stress to you today the importance of taking care of your teeth now. You absolutely have to start taking care of them now so that you'll be set up for a good, solid future of dental health. Uh, some of you in here I know are going to go on to become professional musicians or maybe even a band director like Mr. Adele. And because of that, obviously you're going to need your teeth to do so. So I'm here today to give you some of the tools to better take care of your teeth. Um, First off, one of the side effects of not taking care of your teeth and consuming foods that are very high in sugars or high in carbohydrates, um, you'll form what we call plaque acids or biofilm on the teeth. Uh, the thing about biofilm is that it can be easily removed with brushing and flossing. However, when it sits on your teeth for a pretty lengthy period of time, it'll eventually start to rot away, or we call that tooth decay in dentistry. And I've actually brought some models today to show you what tooth decay looks like. Um, first one here. All right, first off, how many people here like to drink Mountain Dews and Red Bull and yeah, yeah. And I, and I do too, I'm not going to lie about that. But the key to consuming products like that is that you want to drink in very, very limited amounts. And you don't want to sip on them all day long. Because what happens is every time you take a sip of Mountain Dew, let's say, um, every time you take a sip of that, the Mountain Dew will coat your teeth and then you'll form plaque acids on your teeth. And your saliva in your mouth, your spit, will become very acidic in nature. And when we think of words like acid, we think battery acid and lemon juice. Um, that's very low on the pH scale. So every time you take a sip of that, basically, your mouth will drop it into, a, into an acidic state. If it stays in that acidic state for long enough, eventually you'll wind up getting tooth decay. So I brought three, these are actual real teeth here. Um, I collected these from an oral surgeon's office. And the first tooth here that I'm going to show you, and I'm going to pass it around so everybody can look at it, but this is a tooth that's been sitting in water. Water is what we call a neutral pH. It's at a 7. A tooth that stays in a neutral environment is generally not going to form decay. 
So I'm going to pass this around to you. There you go. Thank you. And my second tooth here, when you guys look at it, you're going to notice a big difference between the color of the first tooth and the second tooth. So this tooth has actually been sitting in Mountain Dew for a six hour period. Again, if we go back to what I was talking about, about sipping on sodas all day long, you know, I said earlier that it takes about 20 minutes for your mouth to go from a acidic environment back to a neutral environment. So if you're sipping on a soda every 30 minutes, every 45 minutes, you are constantly exposing your teeth to acid, and again, they will begin to decay. So you'll notice on this one that you'll see a black spot that's forming, and that's actually a cavity or tooth decay or rotting, however you want to call it, that's beginning to form on this tooth. So I'm going to pass this to you. You. My last tooth here, and you're going to be able to see a big, big difference in it, but it's a tooth that's been sitting in Mountain Dew for a 24-hour period and it has a big old honking cavity in it. So moral of the story, if you're going to drink your Cokes and sodas and Red Bulls or eat foods like Laffy Taffy, eat them in small amounts. Don't chew on them all day long. Don't keep them in your mouth all day long. And if you can swish out with tap water right after you get done with it, the tap water will help to neutralize the acids that form on your teeth. Also, tap water will contain fluoride, and I know a lot of you know what fluoride is, Fluoride is basically like vitamins to the teeth. It makes your teeth very strong. And if you're exposed to a healthy amount of fluoride, uh, generally you're not going to develop cavities. So again, if you're going to drink the drinks, swish out with tap water. Don't sip on them. Just try to drink them with lunch or dinner. And um, even if you can, brush your teeth afterwards. Which leads me to my next experiment, which we were going to use uh, Chance, is that your nephew's name? Yes. Okay, yes. so we were going to use Chance for the answer experiment, but I understand Chance is sick. Yes. So, Mr. Adele, you are my lucky, lucky experimentee. Of if you want to come on up here. Okay. And, <coughs> excuse me, do you want to stand on this side? Of course. Grab a sip of water here. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, kids. So how do we know what plaque looks like? When do we know if we have plaque on our teeth or not? And that's one of the hardest things to tell. Um, how many people here like sweet tea? I got my sweet tea drinkers? Okay. So you know when you drink sweet tea and you rub your tongue? <coughs> I am so sorry. Excuse me. One second. Just, uh, just parts. That's okay. <coughs> I don't understand how you stand up here all day long and do this. It's hard. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, so you know that feeling on your teeth when you drink sweet tea and you rub your tongue across your teeth and they feel kind of like sticky, like they have fuzz on it or like you're wearing a sweater or something? That's plaque. And what we're going to do is actually put a disclosing solution on Mr. Adele's teeth. <laughs> and, yes. And what this does, it's kind of um, it's kind of like a spying agent. It'll turn all the plaque that is currently on his teeth into a beautiful, beautiful shade of pink, which, by the way, did you brush your teeth after lunch? I did not. <laughs> so we're going to see how much lunch is remaining on Mr. Adele's teeth. So first things first, we're going to put on our gloves here. You'll hold that for me. Oh, of course. So the company Listerine actually makes something like this that you guys can have your parents buy for you. It's called um, Agent Blue. And it doesn't really work as well as this, but you basically just swish with it and spit it out and it's going to turn the plaque on your teeth blue. So we're going to put a couple of drops in here. And we're going to give Mr. Adele a toothbrush and some toothpaste. Sorry, let me grab a little more. Thank you. You're a great assistant, by the way. Thank you guys for being such good listeners. Yes, and y'all pay close attention to this now. There will be a quiz. All right, I'm going to have you open for me. This does not taste like anything. So basically, this is a dye that's going to stick to his teeth. I'm going, I'm going to have him walk around the classroom and smile for you guys. 
Beautiful, beautiful. So we're going to give them a little bit of water to swish with. You'll swish with that. And you can spit it back in the cup. You can turn your back if you don't want your kids to see you spitting. Thank you. You have a brand new toothbrush and a tube of toothpaste. If you don't mind going into the restroom, I understand you have one back in the corner. So yes, I will be right back, kids. So you all <laughs> be on your best behavior. It shows some of them what your what your teeth look like. So. Which leads me to how you brush your teeth. You want to, hey, first off, brush your teeth at least twice a day. Come on, every morning, right after you eat breakfast or when you first get up, and brush them before you go to bed. Because if you think about it, let's say you only brush your teeth in the morning, and then you eat breakfast, and then you eat lunch, and then you have a soda, and a snack, and dinner, and dessert, and you go to bed, and you're going to bed with all of that garbage on your teeth. So, again, brush them. Make sure it's the last thing you do before you go to sleep at night. And then don't brush your teeth and drink a soda afterwards, because then you just, that was pointless. But you want to start out with your toothbrush. You want to hold it at a 45 degree angle, which everybody today is getting a brochure. Everybody's going to get a brochure that's going to show them how to brush your teeth. And you want to brush your teeth for at least two minutes. If you want to go longer than that, that's fine. Oh, and in regards to toothpaste, just a little pea size amount. You don't have to line the whole strip or anything. If you notice when you're brushing your teeth that you've got foam leaking out of your mouth, it's a little too much toothpaste. Kind of back off a bit. So put it on your toothbrush, hold it against your gum lines, and you want to just very gently and with a little bit of pressure. It actually doesn't take a lot of pressure to brush your teeth. You don't have to get in there and scrub or anything like that. You just want to very gently go all the way across. Keep on going. So you want to get the front sides the back sides, or the insides, and then of course your chewing surfaces. And in your case, chewing cavities are really likely to form on your chewing surfaces. Because you guys, you know, y'all probably eat a lot of candy, I'm sure. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you brush the chewing surfaces. <coughs> um, rinse well, spit out afterwards, and then, of course, floss your teeth. Grab my floss here. When you floss, about yay much dental floss, which yes, you are all at the age where you can start flossing your teeth. Wrap it around your middle fingers, and that way you can use your index finger and your thumbs for kind of guiding it between your teeth. And you want to imagine when you go in there, like you're curving the floss like a C shape around each side of the teeth. And you just want to go up just a little bit. You don't have to push so hard that you're hurting your gums or cutting your gums or anything. But just go up until you start to feel a little bit of resistance or pressure. And then move on to the next tooth and just switch off with your hands. That way you use the new little piece of floss between your teeth at all times. You can just set those teeth right over there. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Dell. Yes. <laughs> Did you brush your teeth? I tried. <laughs> Come on up here. All right. All right, everybody. Oh, that's much better. That's much better. So he's going to walk around the room and show you guys again. Um, you're going to see that he still has some pink remaining between his teeth. Guess what gets between your teeth? Floss. Yep. Yep. You guys. Y'all are good. Um, so yes, that of course is the importance of brushing and flossing your teeth. So yesterday, I had asked Mr. Adele to hand you guys out a quiz for me. Cool, I see a couple of you guys brought it. Um, you're not going to be graded on this or anything like that, but I just wanted to see if everybody got the same answers that I did. So the first question that was asked was which item would be more acidic on the pH scale? <coughs> Your options were milk, cheese, broccoli, or lemons. Lemons, yes, definitely lemons. We talked about battery acid and lemon juice earlier. Brushing and flossing every day will prevent what from occurring? Cavities, gingivitis, bad breath, or all the above? And of course, you guys know the answer is all the above. <coughs> Excuse me. 
this one was a little tricky, um, unless you guys have spoken about this in your science courses, but after consuming acidic foods and drinks, how long does it take for your saliva to return to a neutral pH? 10 to 15 minutes, 20, 20 to 40 minutes, an hour, or as soon as you swallow the food? And yes, 20 to 40 minutes, good. Brushing and flossing a lid will, move, will remove all plaque from the tooth surface. I'm sorry, brushing and brushing alone will remove all plaque from the tooth surface. Of course, that answer is false. You guys just saw Mr. Adele and you saw the plaque that was remaining in between his teeth. And lastly, swishing your mouth with tap water after meals and snacks can help to prevent cavities. And you guys know that that is true, yes. They're really quiet. I've got, got a very little brain. I believe you. <laughs> you must have threatened them. All right, so lastly, everybody today for being such a willing participant and listening to me, you're of course going to go home with your own goodie bag. <laughs> Everybody's going to get a newsletter which is going to discuss in detail what we spoke about today. Um, it will have your brushing tips, your flossing tips. It also will explain how cavities wind up occurring within your mouth. Um, oh, your music stand there. Thank you for letting me borrow that, by the way. Of course, you have another little brochure with some coupons in it that you can pass on to your parents so they can buy some more toothpaste. Flossing tips, and here's tips for, I, I noticed that some of you guys in here are wearing braces. That's even more important that you guys are, are brushing and taking care of your teeth. Because with braces on your teeth, if you're not removing that plaque, it's going to make these little white slash white or brown spots that will form on your teeth. And once you have those spots on your teeth, they are never going away. So again, braces, because of how much food you can get caught in the brackets, you want to make sure that you are always brushing after meals. Everybody, of course, gets a brand new toothbrush. If you don't like your color that you get, trade with your neighbors. Mouth rinse. Toothpaste, and of course, dental floss, because I want all you guys to start putting into practice what we spoke about today. And you guys are a great, great bunch of kids. Mr. Adela invited me to your middle school um, Christmas concert, so I'm definitely going to come and check you guys out. So I'm going to go to Christmas music. And I, again, I just want to thank you guys so much for having me in today. You guys are a wonderful class. And um, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Adele. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We appreciate you coming in and talking to us about this.